Hi everyone, I hope you guys are well. It's Sunday evening. You may have seen that I've uploaded uh, a video about um, fangirling and such and I filmed that earlier today um, and because my broadband is horribly slow, it's taken ages to um, upload and it's meant I haven't been able to watch any Chicago Fire because I need my broadband obviously to download the episodes for streaming. Well, so I've just sat and I thought okay I'm going to spend the afternoon reading some more of The Hate You Give by uh, Andy Thomas and I have just finished it. Finished it, And so I'm filming this now it's Sunday evening but I probably won't upload it until after work tomorrow so just so that you are aware. So the Hate You Give. This is the debut novel by Angie Thomas. It came out in 2017 and was this absolute phenomenal hit. And my sister read it and said, you have to have to get a copy and read it. So I got a copy when we visited Bath um, a couple of years ago now. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it was like two years ago now. And uh, I just haven't got around to reading it. So I thought I would read it because as I had... Um, discussed previously when I did the book review of Children's Blood and Bone, it triggered me to want to read Black Lives Matters um, books. So I read The Long Song, which um, I reviewed last week, and now I've read The Hate You Give. And this, I have to say, I don't just feel that this is a great book. This is an important book. So, in case you don't know what The Hate You Give is about, uh, it follows a girl called Star, who is at a party, and she gets reunited with a friend called Khalil, who she hasn't seen for a few a few months. They've kind of, they're really good friends, and they've kind of fallen out of contact, and they happen to meet at this party, and he drives her home after an incident at this party. And on the way home, they get pulled over by a police car. And uh, Kanil is asked to get out the car and you know provide license and registration and such. And whilst the police officer is checking over his license and everything, while then staying where he is up against the car, Khalil moves and goes to talk to Star, and he has his hairbrush in his hand. And as he's asking Star, he's looking into the car and asking Star, "Are you okay?" He is shot twice in the back and killed. Star is the only witness and it then becomes a case of doing what she can in order to uh, get this guy, uh, get this policeman dealt with by the law but also because of the situation of where it happened, um, what happened and everything because the, the policeman is white and Star and Khalil um, are black uh, in you know, part of, uh, of America, uh, it, it, it has issues within the community. So she can't tell anyone that she was the witness to this crime. And it's very interesting because her parents um, have worked their way, they've worked so hard in order to give their kids uh as as best a life as possible and their kids are actually enrolled at a private school rather than um in the high school that a lot of the community attend and in their high in their private school sorry um star and her brother seven are the only black kids and it's it's very interesting that she talks about how she's got these two lives. She's got this life at a private school where she has to be star, private school star. And then she has this life in her community where she's regular star, as she refers to it. And how, yeah, she's got to keep this secret. She has to try and help um, capture this policeman. She has to try and deal with the rumours that were going around that it could be drugs related and such and it's very interesting how she sees um racism kind of plays into from the different sides of her community and um yeah that's basically what the gist of the story is about as i said i don't feel that this is just a good book this is 
important. It, it is a book that hit at the perfect time. It, um, from what I understand, because I haven't, I haven't kind of researched. Usually, after I've um, done a review, I might leave it a day, and then I can do a bit of research for this review video. I, I haven't. I've literally shut this book, turned on my laptop, and press record. Uh, so I apologise if I've got any of this wrong. Um, but yeah, uh, please let me know if I have got any of this wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, so from what I understand, uh, Angie Thomas wrote this book after kind of the beginning of um, the Black Lives Matters movement um, or, you know, kind of events that led up to uh, the movement took place. I cannot recall for the life of me exactly uh, who it was that got shot to kind of triggered in a sense um oh not triggered is a really bad word i do apologize uh the the the, the shooting which caused the chain of action for her to write this book i will i will actually i'll before i will research that and i'll um i'll put the script the name and such in the description um that emmett till is uh, a boy's story who she mentions multiple times in this book and the name sounded vaguely familiar but I couldn't think why so I actually at one point I, I put the book down and I went and looked him up and he was a 14 year old boy who in the 19 the middle of the 1950s based on the uh, word of a white woman in her, who was about 25 was it? oh no sorry she was 21 at the time sorry uh she said that he had like wolf whistled and um had cornered her and was saying you know sexual things towards her and everything and because of that people related or you know friends of hers uh male relatives and friends found emmett kidnapped him beat him tortured him in the most horrific manner shot him in the head and then dumped his body in a lake where he was found three days later and what is so extraordinary and i've seen the picture i looked i i, I found it was on the wikipedia page about him and it's a really startling picture but it's astonishing um that his family did this they wanted um, him to have an open casket at his funeral so that people could see what was done to him. He's 14 years old. He's unrecognisable. He's, oh my gosh, I can't imagine what his family went through. And, uh, you know, to have that courage to do that in 1955, it's, 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 it's extraordinary. It truly is. And it's very it's very interesting with this book you kind of see um as time has gone on how the changes have happened yet things have stayed the same i you know as as someone who is white uh who isn't um a member of black community i learned stuff from from this book that i didn't know about you know the black community and i love that I love that as as a thirty three year old woman, this book taught me things, and um, it really does teach young children, uh, young children, uh, young adults things as well. Like there's this beautiful part. I I was just I loved it earlier this evening as I was reading. Um, there is this character called Chris who is the most fantastic young adult uh, fiction boyfriend that anyone could ask for i mean he and star are just wonderful um but chris is white and he goes to the private school with star he sees star as a person first before he sees her her race and before he sees his race either and he doesn't understand why people would be a bit weird that they're dating uh, and such and he really is eager to learn and there is this wonderful moment where she writes that um fuck the police by nwa is is playing which i think is an amazing amazing song um and he is he's sort of mumbling along because he doesn't know all the words but he's he's going along with it and when it comes to the n-word i'm not going to say the word because obviously what i'm about to say is that you know it relates to it 
Um, Star says that when the N-word comes up, he's silent. And then she says, as he should. And that was wonderful because that is teaching, you know, young adults who may not understand, who might not think, well, might think, well, it's just a rap song. You know, they use that language. It's fine. No, it's not. It's not fine. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's wonderful that he teaches that. And Chris, on multiple occasions, he asks questions and he doesn't understand why, um, like this one point where he's wearing a certain type of shoes and stars comments on it and he's like well what does it matter what shoes I've got on and she explained and he's like okay and he takes his shoes off he, he really he's really eager to learn he really um tries and he's totally accepting uh, accepting of everyone regardless and he's he's wonderful he's an absolutely wonderful young adult book boyfriend um so yes Chris you you get full marks from me. Uh, I thank you, Angie, for writing him. Uh, I I I love like little things uh, as well, like how he is perceived by Star's family. Um, at first, you know, they're a bit funny about him, and when they get to know him, it's totally fine. Uh, he, you know, he's he's just wonderful, and having that pers that perspective. Is great. There's even a, a really wonderful sequence where um, Star is like basically saying, "This is this is really bad that we're together. This is what our community feels." And she's listing all of these things. Um, uh, and at one point, she is like, I, "I, you know, I grew up here in the hoods," and he's like, "Yeah, and I grew up under a roof as well. What's the difference?" The way he is with her is just truly beautiful. I really love that. Um, another aspect of teaching young adults as well, and adults who read this book, is how you could say, you know, you know, have, have no issues with people of various races, but you could say something or joke about something which you may think is okay but it's not okay and you need to understand that and I just want to read a bit from a chapter um, where Star is with her friends both of whom are white from her private school called uh, Maya and Haley. and uh, haley has been saying some funny things and she has she made a comment uh, like the week before this chapter happens and uh, Star didn't take to it very well and of course she's dealing with everything that's going on plus she has to keep quiet about how she was the witness and everything and yeah, things are bubbling up inside her and this is um, Star, Maya and Haley watching TV together and uh, yeah so here we go they keep glancing at me I keep my eyes on the screen. The animated crowd cheers as Haley's players take a three-pointer. Nice shot, I say. Oh, sorry, they're not watching TV. They're um, playing on a game. Because uh, uh, they play basketball, so they're playing basketball game. Okay, cut the crap. Haley grabs the TV remote and flicks the game off, turning it into a detective show instead. Why are you mad at us? Why did you protest? Since she wants to cut the crap, may as well get right to it. Sorry, I forgot to mention, the protest happened after Khalil died. They had a protest at the school and um, Star didn't attend it, but her friends did. So she's really angry about that and she she's, wants to confront them about it. So, I don't see what the big deal is, Star. You said you didn't know him. Why does that make a difference? Well, isn't a protest a good thing? Not if you're only doing it to cut class. So you want us to apologise for it, even though everybody else did it too, Haley asks. Just because everyone else did it doesn't mean that it's okay. Shit, I sound like my mother. Guys, stop, Maya said. Haley, if Star wants us to apologise, fine, we can apologise. Star, I'm sorry for protesting. It was stupid for us to use a tragedy just to get out of class. We look at Haley. She sits back and folds her arms. I'm not apologising when I didn't do anything wrong. If anything, she should apologise for accusing me of being a racist last week. Wow, I say. 
One thing that irks the hell out of me about Haley, the way she can turn an argument around to make her the victim. She's a master of that shit. I used to fall for it, but now? I'm not apologising for what I felt, I say. I don't care what your intention was, Haley. That fried chicken comment felt racist to me. Fine, she says. Just like I felt it was fine to protest. Since I won't apologise for what I felt and you won't apologise for what you felt, I guess we'll just watch TV. Fine, I say. Maya grunts like it's taking everything in her not to choke us. You know what? If you two want to be this stubborn, fine. Maya flicks through channels. Haley does the BS move where you look at someone out the corner of your eye, but you don't want them to know that you care enough to look, so you avert your eye. At that point, it's whatever. I thought I came to talk, but yeah, I really want an apology. I look at TV, a singing competition, a reality show, 115, a celebrity dance. Wait, back up, back up, I tell Maya. She flicks through the channels, and when he appears again, I say, right there. I pictured his face so much. Actually, seeing it again is different. My memory is pretty spot on. A thin, jagged scar above his lip, bursts of freckles that cover his face and neck. My stomach churns and my skin crawls and I want to get away from 115. My instinct doesn't care that it's a photograph being shown on TV. A silver cross pendant hangs from his neck like he's saying Jesus endorsed what he did. We must believe in a different Jesus. So 115 was the number, the police officer's number on his uniform. And she doesn't learn his name until that news report. And it's very interesting. I love how powerful and bold uh, Angie Thomas makes Star's thoughts. And this, it's so raw. It is so real. That's why I really love. It is so real. I, I, I literally, I, I'm, I'm pretty astounded by this book if I am I am really honest the things that it teaches young adults and adults who who read this the way that she conveys Star's world her family the different perspective from the black community from the white community from the rich from the poor um the feelings um towards press towards police officers how music and culture, uh, TV shows, anything fuels this, you know, the, this diff this community and us in the world and how the impact on social media is now affecting um, various things um, like due to a, a situation within minutes an event is is lined up after something happens and people are already gathered together, they do, they've they planned X, Y, Z in minutes because the social media allows us to instantly have that connection with people. I, I really feel this is important. This is something, this is a book like Handmaid's Tale, To Kill a Mockingbird, that I really think everyone needs to read. And the fact that Angie Thomas taught me things. And like I said, I'm a 33-year-old white woman living in England. And she taught me things about the, the black community uh, and everything. I love that. I loved the complexities. I loved all the relationships, the connections. I loved, like, the shop owners, uh, you know, in the, who's... Um, who has shops next door and opposite her father's store. I love the complexity of her father and her uncle's relationship, um, how he had been in prison when she was growing up and his brother Carlos kind of took over um, looking after her, you know, raising her and such. There are so many elements to this book that are so intricate and so superbly constructed and so wonderful and real and powerful and I am so thankful for Angie Thomas for writing it. I definitely would like to read her other words. I think she's now published a second novel from what I understand um, but I have absolutely no idea what it's about or anything. Um, but yes and the fact that she constantly refers to those who have passed you know the, the 
kind of caused the Black Lives Matter movement to happen, both all the way back from the 1950s with Emmett, all the way up to to now, or at least when she published the book in 2017. Very sadly, there have been more lives lost um, in America and such from gun violence and that since um, since this book was published. I really hope that um, gun control laws are are changed in America and we don't have all of these horrific um, news bulletins about various shootings and such happening in America. They are so tragic and I feel for all of um, the the victims' families and such for, for the turmoil that they are going through. Um, so sorry for, for your loss. Um, and I feel like with this book... Uh, I understand more a part of our world and I'm thankful for that. So thank you, Angie Thomas, for writing this, for teaching me things and please continue doing what you're doing because you're fab. I think you're fabulous. Now, uh, in 2018, the Hate You Give was turned into a film. I have seen the trailer. I have not seen the film. It never came to where I live. And I have checked uh, YouTube and Netflix and it's not available on either. So I think I'm going to have to track down DVD in order to get to watch it. I'd like to watch it, see how they interpreted the book. Um, but looking at the trailer, I think it looks pretty close. To, to the actual book itself, so which is great. Um, but yeah, I I really um I, I really really want to watch the film. I'm gutted that I haven't been able to watch it. Uh, but I will try and track down a copy and uh, and see what I think of it. So yeah, so that they're my thoughts on the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I forgot to mention the Hate You Give or thug as it's also known about um is actually a lyric from a tupac uh song and tupac i think was just he is you know sadly was since he was he was killed um oh gosh when was it now yeah it's like 20 odd years ago now i think it is um but you know, very sadly, he was he was taken from us. Uh, he was an, a poet, an artist, an extraordinary man, and the way that Angie uh, uses his words and lyrics in this book is beautiful. And to call it the hate you give, and what what song that that comes from, and what it means, she talks quite a bit in this book, and um, I really love that she's used that for the title of her book and uh the what it when you know what it means it's, it's all the more powerful for her to have used it as the title of her book so yeah so those are my thoughts on the hate you give by angie thomas have you read this book i'd love to know what you think you leave me a comment in the comments box below or give me a thumbs up thumbs down entirely up to you i'll let you decide and uh as you may remember from my previous announcement video i'm going to be reading train spotting next by Ella welsh i'm really excited so uh yeah I'll be back with my thoughts on Train Spotting by Irvin Welsh. All right, guys. Bye.